Hello and welcome to Thursday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. And today we've got a puzzle that two of our testers are raving about. Um, it's by the constructor Apio. Um, and I think I've done one of Apio's puzzles before, back in October 2020. Uh, so this is his second appearance on the channel. And yeah, as I say, this is apparently something of a masterwork and I'm looking forward to trying it. Um, before we kick off, just a reminder, if you are a patron of the channel, we've got the video of how to solve this month's January January reward puzzle. That is live, um, so check it out. As of course, we've also got uh, Reverend's Puzzle Hunt, which has been so popular. Um, and with that, let's talk about the rules of Apayo's puzzle. What have we got? We've got normal Sudoku rules apply. Uh, cells separated by a knight's move in chess cannot contain the same digit. So, ah, another chess Sudoku today. So what does that mean? That means, imagine this, this cell here was a chess knight. It could jump to all of these cells. And that means none of these cells can contain a nine, because that would be a nine, a knight's digit away, a knight's move away from another nine. Um, Grey circles and squares must contain odd and even digits respectively. So we've got gray circles, four gray circles, ah, and four, four squares, gray squares as well. So the gray squares are even, the gray circles are odd. Um, digits along a solid gray line must form a palindrome. Ah, so we've got four Zs in the grid, look. These are palindromic Zs of all things. So what a palindrome means it reads the same backwards and forwards. So that means this square, if that's a one, this square would have to be a one. If that was a three, that would have to be a three. And now if we read along the palindrome, we go one, three, three, one. If we read it backwards, one, three, three, one. So it reads identically. So that's all good. Uh, we've also got digits along arrows must sum to the total in their white cir circle. So we've got two purple arrows, look. So that means those two cells add up to whatever is in the circle there. So if this was three and that was five, this would have to be eight. And that's how the arrows work. Um, we've got quite a lot of rules actually in this puzzle. Ah, we've got a diagonal constraint. So both main diagonals need to contain the digits one to nine once each. So as well as each row, each column, and each box, box containing the digits one to nine, in this puzzle, those cells have to contain the digits one to nine, as indeed do these as well. And the digit, oh, the number outside the grid indicates the sum of the digits along its diagonal. Right, so we've got a 35 diagonal there. Those five cells have to add to 35, and digits may repeat along that diagonal. So that means, for example, those two, oh, in fact, those two squares would be the same because they're on the palindrome. Let's pick a better example. Those two squares could be the same. Um, and yeah, that's all the rules. So quite complicated today. Do have a go. As I say, this is meant to be brilliant. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking. And we're faced with the perennial problem of how we even start one of these puzzles where there doesn't seem to be. I mean, actually, there's even less information than usual today because normally we get at least a thermometer or a longer arrow or something, but a two cell arrow I guess we've got the parity thing going on. We've had that going on in the last few videos, haven't we? So I know that the yellow cells here um, must sum to an even total because I know that whether if this circle is odd, that means that the sum of the digits along the arrow are odd and an odd plus an odd is an even. Now, if it's even, obviously an even plus an even is still even. So those three add to an even, these three add to an even we know that the whole diagonal contains the digits 1 to 9, so it will add up to 45, um, as you've probably heard me say once before. Um, so if, if the yellows are even, these must add up to an odd number. 9 last time I checked was odd, which means these two add up to an even number, which means they are either both odd or they are both even. And that is absolutely useless. Um, I think that's useless. We've got, I think it is useless because even though I've seen now we've got two evens on the diagonal, I guess if these were both even, we'd know all of these would have to be odd, which is, well, I don't see why that couldn't be the case. Certainly parity is preserved in the in boxes three and seven. So 
I don't think this is how you break into this puzzle. Okay, so we've got to think about something else. What? <laughs> what do we have to think? There's a 35, that isn't useful, is it? Um, it does have a relatively high average. You can see that, that these five cells must add average seven. But, I mean, yeah, I don't actually think that's that helpful. I mean, I can't actually put three nines in here, but could I have three eights in those positions? I'm not sure immediately at first blush why I couldn't do that, which means those two would have to add up to, actually I could have a nine here. I could have nine eight eight. Uh, yeah, nine eight eight is even higher. So that gives me 25 plus 10. So the minimum value of these yellow squares is 10. That's not, that's not nearly enough. Um, what on earth do you do to start this puzzle? Evens. Ah, okay. Okay, well there's a... I don't think it's the start of the puzzle, but I can see that there is... Well, there is a, a modest relationship between the even digits in the puzzle. Let's imagine this square was a 2. Uh, where would... Which one of these could be two? Well, the answer is none of them, because obviously this and this share a row and column, and because of the diagonal constraint, this can't be a two either. So in fact, okay, so these even digits are all different. I don't really have a good way of representing that, but I think we've got to try and remember. These are all different digits. I can't actually, ah, now hang on, I've got a nine in the in the center. So I can't put eight in either of those two squares because if I do, I'm gonna break my arrow because this square can't be a two digit number. The highest it could be would be nine, um, but it can't be nine because nine's already there. So it, this can't be eight. So although this sum works, it doesn't when there's a nine already on the diagonal. So eight can be removed from those two squares, which means eight is definitely in one of these two squares. That, good grief, this is really difficult actually. There is nothing to go on in this puzzle. We've got odd digits in these four squares. I can immediately, right, okay, well you can, I can see these can't be nines. So these are from the digits one, three, five, and seven, but they don't see each other. So unlike the evens where we could conclude they're all different, the odds, well I think the odds can all be the same, well, can they all be the same digit? No, they probably all can't be the same digit because that will break uh, box five's position for that digit, but they can certainly... Uh, I think that they can. I mean, if those two were the same digit, let's just actually to check this. Um, if these were both seven, where would seven go in the central box? It would because of the knight's move constraint, it couldn't go in this square. So the seven would definitely go in one of those squares. Is that a problem? Um. Ah, ah, now hang on a moment. That is not possible. That is interesting, actually. That is interesting. You can't put at least I don't think you can put the same digit in these two cells. Because if you do, the problem is not box 5, it's the diagonal. If these are both 7, where does 7 go on this diagonal? And it's really quite interesting because of this, um, this Z. The Z comes into its own because this square which seems to be an absolute mile away from these sevens. It doesn't seem to have anything in common with them. But because um, the Z requires us these two digits to be the same, if we drew, do try and put a seven there, this would be a seven and it would, it would see that seven. So you, the only places you can put the seven on the diagonal are right in the corners. And that 
That's extraordinary. That breaks the other diagonal. That is extraordinary. That's a really remarkable find by a Paiu because by, let's just go through why this is this, this doesn't work. If we've put a seven in one of these two cells, it doesn't matter which one we've put it in. It's the seven will always see both of the sort of extreme cells on the other diagonal. So we couldn't put a seven in these two cells. So where are we going to put the seven now? It can't go here. These are even. It can't go here by Sudoku. It can't go here by Sudoku. It can't go here by Knight's Move. It can't go here by Sudoku. And it can't go there. So that is right. But that doesn't actually prove that much. It just proves that these two are not the same. But, but ah, aha, now I'm thinking this grid is incredibly rotationally symmetric. So that I'm so that these two well I can't think this is going to work unless I've missed something here because I didn't use the arrows to prove that I didn't use the little killer clue I just used the basic geometry of the grid so I'm pretty sure it's this this won't work either we'll just prove it just for the sake of good order so where can the seven go on this diagonal now uh, it can't go here because that will reflect into this square, uh, this square here, which will see this seven. So it can't go in those. It can't go in the evens. It's got to be in the extremities. Now, where do we put that? Rules out those two squares on the other diagonal. It can't go there. It can't go here by night. It's the same logic. It's the same logic. It's very clever. Now I am getting excited now because if I can rule seven out of these two squares, then we have, then we have a weirdness going on. Now, does this break? It doesn't break the middle box again. Maybe it breaks the diagonals again. Oh yeah, it's the same. It's the same. Where does the seven now go on this diagonal? It's, it is so peculiar. It's got to go in the corners. Therefore, there's no seven in those squares on the other diagonal. And you can't put seven anywhere. Beautiful. So, so what does this mean? It means that these, so just like the evens actually, the evens with four different digits, these odds, bizarrely enough, are also four different digits. I feel that like that's an enormous breakthrough. Um, what does it mean? These are four different digits, maybe I have to color them. Um, I don't think they are going to be amenable to colouring though because they're not very if they're all different the restriction they apply on the middle box or indeed any box is very very light if this was whatever this is can't go in those squares Um, sorry, I'm, I'm at a bit of a loss actually. Uh, what am I not understanding? These are different. Let's just color, I'll color them in. That will give me something to do while my brain catches up. Um, what does it mean that these The only good thing about a puzzle like this, where you have absolutely no clue what to do, is there are very few places to look. Because there's... <laughs> what clues have we got to play with? We've got this one, and if that one is the break-in, then... Ah, uh, well, I will be surprised. I do not see how to use that clue. We've got the arrows. Now, I could have missed something on the arrows, that is for sure. Um... You can't put a nine in the corners, but this could still be six. And this could be one or two. Is there something? Is there something about the arrows that I'm not understanding? Quite probably. If, if I'm not understanding it, I am sorry. I'm not trying to be obtuse or slow. I promise I am trying to solve it. Um, 
So if it's not the arrows, it's got to be it's got to be the palindromes. The palindromes must do something here. Well, okay, that actually is an interesting thought in the sense that looking at the red one, the red one if the red one if the red digit is on a palindrome it can't be on most of the palindromes it can't be on those palindromes at all because you may think ah well it can't be in those two why couldn't it be in those two but obviously if either of these is red its reflection on the palindrome will take it downwards into this row where it will clash so so if if red is on a palindrome, it's got to be on that palindrome. What does that mean? Yeah, okay. I mean, the, the logic obviously is, is rotationally consistent. So, similarly, this palindrome, the only digit that's odd. Ah, yeah, oh, that's true. That's true. Nine can't go on the palindrome. Ah, that's interesting. The nine sees this one wing of the palindrome there and that one on the diagonal. And that's the same always. Right. So if there's a so the only odd digit that can appear on this palindrome is red. Green, blue, purple are ruled out. And that must be the true. So if I look at this one, is that one going to go down there, is it? Because it can't go on that one, that one, or that one. It could go on this one, and this one can't be blue, red, or green. Yeah, okay. So each odd digit can go on a maximum of one palindrome. So if I can limit the even digits, and each odd, odd digit does not include 9, which can go on no palindrome. So is there a restriction? Let's look at this square. Let's make this one. 8 is my lucky number. So 8. I'm going to make this 8, and I'm hoping it can't go on all the pal. Well, it definitely can't go on that. Pa ah, it can't go on two palindromes. But it, ah, now if it goes on this palindrome, now it gets really confusing because if it goes on this palindrome here, it can't go in those two cells because it sees this uh, sort of bottom of the Z on the diagonal. But it could, I think, go in these two cells. Now, is there anything wrong with that? That would be marvelous if there was something wrong with that. That nearly breaks this box. Gosh, it's it gets really restricted actually. If 8s are here, the 8 in this box, because of the knight's move restraint, has to go in one of those two squares. And now look, where does 8 go in this, in the central box? It's got to go here. Oh no, could it go here? No, it can't go there because of the diagonal. It can't go here because of the knight's move. It does go there. Now, is that broken yet? Oh, it's close to breaking. It can't... Ah, 8 then gets placed in this box here. Eight can't go here. It can't go... So 8 gets placed in that box. 8 gets placed in this. 8 gets placed everywhere in the grid which probably means it's correct. Wow. Wow. Okay, so that is a long way towards good lithism, which I don't approve of, but I'm just trying to get my head around how these palindromes work. So what... So it certainly seems possible that this, this contains an 8. Now this one also, I think, I can't see why this one couldn't be an 8, or couldn't have an 8 on it. That can't. Ah, that one can't be an 8, though, because of the... That's going to break... Ah, but that's really difficult. I've got to be careful with this, because 
if I'm going to rely on rotational symmetry to eliminate the possibility for all digits, I can't use the arrow to eliminate the 8 from this square. But anyway, I don't think it matters. The point is that 8 can go on this palindrome, even if it's those squares. But if 8 was on this one, it couldn't be also be on this one. And that... Hang on. That is a very interesting thought. Oh, good grief. Right, hang on a minute. That that must surely matter because... Well, that is a beautiful idea. I really hope this is what it is because this is... Oh, this is sort of heart-wrenching if it's true. Eight... Eight can go on a maximum... Well, whatever digit is in this cell can go on a maximum of one palindrome. Because if it's on this palindrome, it will occupy one of these two cells, and therefore it can't be on this palindrome. And if it's on this palindrome, it will occupy one of these two cells, and therefore can't be on that palindrome. Now that means, I think, so now, haven't we got a situation where we've got four even digits, each of which can go on one palindrome, and we've got four odd digits, each of which can go on a maximum of one palindrome? Well, I've got to put digits on the palindrome, and in fact, each palindrome has two digits on it, exactly. One, two for this one, one, two for this set, one, two, one. So I need eight digits, and I've only got eight digits available. I've got one odd number, one of each of the odds except nine, because you can't put the same odd number on two different palindromes, and I've got one even digit for each palindrome, because you can't put two even digits on two, you can't put the same even digit on two palindromes either. So, I'm getting, I think, to the point where I now think... that each palindrome contains one odd digit exactly, and one even digit exactly, such that all of those, but all of those digits are different digits, and they don't include nine. And that is incredibly beautiful, and probably useless. I really, really don't want it to be useless, though. What does it mean? What does that mean? If I know... Ah! Sorry, sorry about this. Let me just think about this a bit more. So now, so now I know that whatever's in this square is on this palindrome, because if it's not, I can't fill this palindrome, because it would have to only have even digits, and it can't have two even digits. So. So this, this includes a red digit. Do we know... <sighs> Sorry about this. I know that some of you are probably shouting at the screens trying to get me to hurry up. I, 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 <laughs> I am trying. So this has a red digit in it. May as well make it red. This. So how does this work? It's sort of... This one needs to have a blue digit in it. This one down here needs to have a green digit in it. And this one needs to have a purple digit in it. But we don't... 
I don't think I know. Because because there is optionality in the position of the even digit. The even digit well this whatever's in this square can be in one of two palindromes. But I don't know which one. So something must disambiguate this puzzle. Otherwise it's just going to, is it the 35 somehow is going to come into its own? What is it I'm missing here? Oh, I've, I've just spotted it. I've just spotted something. I have spotted something. I have. Right. Now, I want to look at this cell. Because... I think we can ask what the parity of this cell is. This parity, because I know there's blue in one of the cells in in the palindrome here, this square cannot be blue because that would eliminate the possibility of there being a blue in this pal in this palindrome. So if this is not blue and not green and not purple and not red and not nine, it's even. And this might help me on the diagonal now because that must be true for each position. So each of the corners by symmetry is even. And let's just prove that to ourselves. Let's look at this one. So you can see that this square clearly can't be blue. It sees blue in its row. It can't be green. It sees green in its column. It can't be red. It sees red by night's move. And if it was purple, you couldn't put purple in there. And we know there must be purple in there. So this is even and that's going to work symmetrically so these squares are now one three five and seven i've still have just noticed i've not even sniffed a digit yet but now now i've got more information than i once had about this diagonal because this diagonal now has its quota of in fact not only does it have its quota of even digits one of those two digits must be eight because neither of those is so there's no eights there. So now these squares are odd. And maybe, yeah, now we can remove one from here. If ones were in the corner, that would mean those two squares had to sum to one, which is impossible. Three might be problematic. If this was three, you'd have to go three, one, two. Surely, no, you can't. If this is three, one, two, in any order, any order, what do you put into those squares? Because, and you can't put anything, because any sum involving that adds up to five or seven needs a one, two, or a three to make it work. So this is not three, and obviously that's exactly the same. That is not three. Now I've got a five, seven pair. I'm closing in on a digit here. This is not five, seven. I've got a one, three pair. In the purple, so the odd digit, oh, this is lovely, this is unbelievable. So now, I know, let's look at this palindrome. It's got to have an odd digit in it and an even digit. This is the odd digit, which means this is the odd digit, which means these two squares are even, and it means this square is a because it's purple, oh, whoopsie. Uh, this is purple, so it is now one or three, and blue is one or three, and blue's equivalent is here, so these two squares are the even squares. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, that means... What does it mean? Um... What does it mean? Come on, Simon, what does it mean? Um, I'm sorry about this. I'm not seeing what it means. One of these is five, one of them is seven. Is there a restriction that therefore applies? So, if this is two, this is definitely three. 
if this is four, this is one or three. If this is six, this is this can't be three. Um, together, these have to add up to twelve. Ah, okay. So I can't use four. I can't use four, can I? Because if I use four, the other cells, the other three cells in the in in the diagonal have to add up, or in these positions, have to add up to eight, and there's no combination that is possible. Um, now, is that right? That feels right. Yeah, okay, that is right. Another way of thinking about that is that if this is five and this is we try and do it with four one, how do I make this now add up to seven, given that four and one are not available? It's impossible. Um similarly if this is seven and I use the four, this has to be three. So seven four three. This has to be five, but four and three have been used, and I need one of them to make the five work. So it is true to say there's no four. It's therefore true to say that two and six are definitely on this diagonal, which means they are not there, which means that this doesn't include a four. It means that we, we've got more of a restriction on these squares than we once had. Still, I've still not got a digit. I have still not got a digit on this puzzle. So have we learned anything about, can we do Sudoku on blues or something like that? Please let something work, what? Whichever one of these Okay, so blue will mirror onto one of those squares. Oh dear. Um, right, these are not one and three. Two, six, four, and eight on this diagonal I mean this square cannot be even, but I know there must be an even in this said said palindrome, and there must be an odd. So this is odd, which means this is odd, which means these are the two squares that are five and or have the options of five and seven. These two squares do not. So these two are even. Now the same must be true for the red on the other side. This square cannot be even, so these two are a 5-7 pair. These two are the even pair. So I've now, I've now got this sort of pattern. Going around the grid. I don't like these eight pencil marks, they're annoying me. Let's get rid of those. And think again. So what is it that I now need to understand about the puzzle? Um, this green sees so if this is green you can't put green so green is in one of those two positions Ah, this can't be green. Here you go, here we go. Green, by knight's move, sees this square. This is not green. Green is not that square. So green is in one of these two squares, which means green is in one of these two squares. This square sees that one by knight's move. This square is green. Now I think that must flow round the grid. 
Um, so let's try that again. Let us try it with, yeah, it's the same. It's so cool. This puzzle is incredible. Purple, obviously, rules out purple from this square. These two see that one. So purple's in one of those two. This one sees that one. This is purple. So we get this sort of run of threes in each of these positions. Blue. Oh, does this, does this, is this, is this, is this why the 35 is there? Please. It is why the 35 is there. This cannot be. Well, this, this is green, so it's 5 or 7. If I make all of those 5, that only adds up to 15. That means those two have to add up to 20, which is impossible. These are three sevens. And these two have to add up to 14, which can't be two sevens now, or we'd, we'd have five sevens in a row. And the sevens would clash in boxes six and eight. I can't use nine because nine can't go in either of those squares. So these are a six, eight pair. And that means green is seven. And that means red is five. Which the symmetry in this puzzle is extraordinary. So now I've got a one three pair here. Um, and is this is this enough that I can? Oh, the five is seeing that square. Lovely. Oh, sorry, the seven. Sudoku will help me now. So I'm definitely colouring these in. I've just coloured them in the wrong way round. Sorry. Sorry, everybody. I am a fool. Five now can't go there because of the knight's move. Five goes here. And presumably that works identically the other way round, does it? Oh, no, weirdly, it doesn't. Surely the sevens have the same... F I seem to have more... Five. Why don't the sevens work symmetrically? Oh, it's because of the six eight, of course. If I had a six eight here, then I would know that there was a seven here. But because I don't, I don't. So the fives are, I think, more constrained. Um. Okay, so what do we do next? That is the question. Um, I think fives must be a good place to look because this six eight has helped to place this five. Five can't go here. Ah, five can't go on the diagonal. Five's in one of those two cells in box nine. And five is in one of these two squares in box three. Five's therefore... Ah, five's placed in box seven by Sudoku. Look, if we highlight the fact there's a five in one of those two is ruling out all of these squares together with this five. These two rule out that. That places five on the diagonal with the arrow. So this can't be six. This is a so this this is now done. We got a five two three here. We must get a one six seven here. This becomes a three. So purple and blue have now been resolved. Ones and threes. This three sees that these that by knight's move. One three. Let's make that blue. Let's make this purple. This must be green. Um, okay, so I have got an extremely symmetrical grid with the exception of this five, which are ah, which is very useful because the five now here can only go in that square. So that that becomes a red five standing by. Um, Five is here, obviously. 
I think I might have done all the fives. One, two, three. Yeah, the fives are now placed. So can we keep this going? And if so, how do we keep it going? Where is the symmetry broken in a way that allows us to find the next deduction? Or maybe I can keep going with one is in one of those two cells. One is in one of these two cells. Three is in one of those two. Three is in one of these two. Seven is in one of these two. Seven is in one of those. And one of these. Okay, this is not looking good, is it? Um, maybe... I'm saying maybe. I haven't really got a clue how to do this. What is it about... What is it about the pattern now that unwinds it? Is it an even digit or is, do I have to continue with the odd digits for a bit longer? That's the question. I don't know the answer. Um, or is it just nines maybe actually? I'm just looking at nine in this box and noticing it's restricted. Nine can only go in one of two places. Uh, but it's pretty... And two places over in this box as well. We, are, we know 9 is not on the palindrome. Let's take this forward. 9 is never on the palindrome because 9 can never be in this square or this square. So 9 is in one of those two cells, which means 9 is in one of these two cells. 9 in this box is not on the palindrome. It's not as... It's weird the way the symmetry works. It's not quite as restricted as I thought it would be. Ah, uh, hang on, 9 in this box is restricted for some reason. So 9's got to be in one of those, which means 9's not here, which means 9 is here. Which means 9 is in... Nine, well, look, look at this. Now 9 has to be in one of those two squares, but there's a 9 in one of these two. So 9 goes there, which means this is 7, that's 7, that's 7, and we get a bit more actual traction. 9 is in one of those two positions. And look, now the 9 here, maybe maybe this was restricted before and I just didn't notice actually. I'm having that feeling. So 9 is not there. So 9, nine is now in this position, in this position. None of these seem to be flitting by Knight's move. but And I've got a green 7 there. A green, green 7's there and there. I'm not going to colour the 9's. And what does it mean? Six, I suppose, is on this diagonal, and I've got a six here. So six is in one of those two cells. Maybe I can do some similar trick with twos, can I? Yeah, two is in one of those two cells. Sorry about this. I know it must be frustrating because I'm pretty certain I'm missing something really obvious here. Because the puzzle, I'm sure, is not broken. And three, maybe, in this box. Where does three go in this box? It must be in one of two places. No, that's still not enough. Is there some way I can disambiguate these squares in the middle, or at least the palindrome squares? I 
I would like that very much. So this this one's this one here, whatever this is, it's not six. It's not got six on it. Oh, it's not got two on it either, actually. Because if this had two on it, it would see this two and this two in the central box. So this is a four eight pair. When I say it, no, that's incorrect. It is the digits in these cells are four or eight. They are the same, whatever they are. And that means they're not the same as this. Because whatever this is sees those, both of those squares. Good grief. So these two are the same as this one. And that means what? I think it means, I think it means we might have to colour the, the evens as well. I'm not sure. I'm really nervous about doing that. Actually, threes, look. Threes are in these positions. So three must be, ah, I can do more with threes. Yes. Threes apparently are not there. And they're not here yet. Yeah, threes are aligned in rows one and rows two. So three must be in this position exactly in box one because it can't be in those squares. We still need to put a three in row three of the grid. It can only go here. And that places the two. And that is incredibly exciting because it, because it places two in box two. Oops, that's not how to do it. That's a two. That's a two. That's a three. That means this is a three, and all of a sudden we've got more digits. This being two, ah, oh, it doesn't see anything. This has got to be four or eight. So this means this square needs to be a six, I think. And that's on a palindrome. So yeah, if we look along this row, those two have got to be the same. They are sixes. Sixes in one of these two cells, therefore. This six sees the central box. That's a two. That's a six. That means this is a two by Sudoku, which places the nine, places a nine at the top. This is not three. And surely now we must be closing. And actually, let's have a look at this diagonal. I'm just noticing I've not put one and three on it at all. And this square cannot be a three so it's a one which means that's a three I think all the threes have just been finished the ones need to all be blue we must be able to do those now yet yeah, we can get another blue one here another blue one here and that means this square is a one Now we've got the sixes here. Now does that mean we should be able to get the twos on a palindrome somehow? Um, it probably does if I look in the right place. Yeah, where does two go? Ah, yeah, where does two go in this box? Two's got to go here, which is on a palindrome. So we get the twos. So the only, I've not placed fours and eights, so these are a four, eight in some way. That means this square must be a six to complete row eight. Which means I think this square is a six to complete row seven. That means that's a six. This is a four or an eight. We've got four, eight pairs all over the place. The six must ah the six now in this box must be in the bottom row, so it sees that square, which makes that eight that six. This eight fixes the palindrome here. That should be eight. Therefore, that should be four. Therefore, this should be eight. That should be eight on the palindrome. Four goes here. This needs a four. This needs a four on the diagonal. That places the eight there. That's an eight. That's an eight. That's an eight. And this column needs two, four, and nine. You can see this should be nine. 
that places nine here. This should be two, this should be four, this should be four, this should be eight. And I really hope I've got this right. This is a four, six pair. It looks all right, doesn't it? Four, six there. Click check. Wow, what a puzzle that is. That is amazing. I'm not even sure I know what I've solved there either. It all got a bit hazy after, I think I was fairly clear in my head up to the point that I got the Zs had to be an even and an odd digit. And even I was, a, I, then I managed to get this diet. Well, then I got the corners, which were even. That was all quite clear. After that, disambiguating this and working out where where the exact even digits went on each of the palindromes felt like um like something I didn't understand quite. But I mean, it's an incredible construction, Apayu. Incredible! What a puzzle! What a puzzle! I'm going to go away and think about this one for a while. Um, let me know how you got on with it. I, I tell you this, I loved it, and we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.